Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, Fedora 31 has been released, and we're just going to have a quick look under the hood. Honestly, as far as releases of current Linux distributions, Fedora 31 brings with it GNOME 3.34. Just some general rolling updates. Nothing else super significant, at least on the basic workstation. There is this uh, toolbox that is in the Silverlight, which I still have not had a chance to look into, and I am going to look into that eventually. But I did want to uh, just talk briefly about Fedora. So this is one that I've never generally had on my recommendations list, just because it's in the past, Fedora was extremely hard to get working right. And uh, you'd install it, and then you'd find the lists of 25 things you need to do once in Fedora is installed to get things up and running, and it was a royal pain and things like that. And when that was the case, yeah, we had problems. In fact, I had a friend a um, long time back that uh, he would run Fedora on stuff. His dad was actually a Red Hat certified Linux system administrator. He still could never get Fedora working just right on his computer. And so for me, it's like, eh, I, I don't install Linux to figure out how to get things to work. I use Linux to actually get my work done. So I need working computers. But within a couple of releases back, Fedora started to become amazingly good. That it probably will end up on my next list of distros for new users. Because if you are using particularly the GNOME version, it absolutely out of the box is a wonderful experience. So let's go ahead and have a quick look at their website first. So over here, um, of course, Fedora 31 is released. You can see that. I believe this is taking us to the release notes. So their website is at getfedora.org. Here is the original release notes. So of course, toolbox, uh, why not give it a try? Just type in toolbox, enter from the command line. And uh, I tried that, it doesn't work on the workstation. <laughs> I think this is something related to Silverlight. Uh, and then they have a variety of different flavors. I did find in the past that the flavors did not quite have the good support that the main GNOME-based Fedora has as far as easily adding um, GPM Fusion and, and the other things. Did I say that right? I think I said that right. Whatever. Um, adding all the repos that you need for music, codecs, things like that, or things that people want. Really easy to install on the new GNOME format. It, I did run... KDE Plasma Fedora, and that did not work quite as well, but it was still okay. They have alternative architecture ones for ARM, Arch64, Power, S390X. Um, they did bring, let's see, they do not have the 32-bit architecture anymore. Overall general improvements, again, just some basic updates to packages. Uh, there's some Docker things. Um, didn't see the note here about GNOME, but it's in here. So there it is. GNOME is 3.34, so really nothing super duper exciting. But at the same time, it is get it incrementally better. So suppose that you are thinking about switching to Linux and you might want to try out Fedora. Maybe you've heard some good things about it. Just head on over to the main website and then we have the server for if you're just running a server or if you're running a desktop computer like I'm recording this on, we want to use the workstation. So hit your download now. Now, if you are on Windows or Mac, you're going to want to get the Fedora Media Writer, which, in full disclosure, I have not used this. If I'm doing this, I just use my, you know, Linux Mint also has a Media Writer, so I just use the one that's built into my main operating system. But if you're on Windows, this guy here is a .exe file. If you're on Mac, this guy here is a DMG file. So just go ahead and grab this, and this is going to walk you through the steps to download the ISO image that you have over here and put that onto a spare USB drive. Then you're going to want to plug that USB drive into your computer and boot off of the drive. Now, if you are using a new Mac, you will need to go into your uh, into your startup options and allow the ability to boot off of a USB drive. And I forget the commands to do that. It's like, you know, holding down like a few keys and turning it on. And I forget what it is because I don't run Macs a lot. On Windows, uh, you will probably, if you have a newer computer, you are going to need to go into your BIOS. You will probably need to disable Secure Boot. It will yell at you about that, but just say don't worry about it. 
And um, the other thing you're going to have to do is make sure that you can enable booting from a USB. Sometimes that is enabled by default, sometimes it is not. But on a Windows computer, it always tends to boot off of that first hard drive first. So you're either going to want to load your boot menu or set your BIOS to start up by checking for a USB drive before booting the primary hard disk. That will boot you into the operating system. Now, once you get into this, this file is going to get you into the live workstation where you can then install Fedora. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump on over to the actual installation. Now, I have installed this, but I have not actually run it yet. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we are going to jump on over. So I've booted the virtual machine up into a live key. I have installed Fedora, but I have not even booted it into the system yet. So Fedora installs kind of as an OEM install now, which means that you don't set up any of your, your usernames or anything right when you are setting up the installation. You do that the first time the system runs so that you can deploy it across a series of workstations and then each person when they get their new computer can boot up their system and jump on into it. So here we are on the main desktop. I always love their wallpapers. This one's a little bit light. Of course we have our taskbar up here at the top and we are just waiting for the first run load screens. So here it tells us welcome and it should tell us this in multiple languages in case you can't read that. So now I can't read it. So push our next button. And then this is the ability to set location services. So do you want to uh, applications that are programmed with geolocation services to be able to identify that based on your IP address. I do not like that, so I'm going to say no. And then automatic problem reporting. Do you want reports to automatically send uh, send information back? So this will send out reports allegedly anonymously scrubbed to personal data. I do not know all of the details about how that would work, so I'm going to turn that off. So here I can connect any online account. So if I'm using Google or Nextcloud or Microsoft or oh, Facebook, you can go ahead and add these accounts right here. So clicking in Nextcloud, just type in your server, your username, your password. And GNOME is going to give us integration with contacts, calendars, and um, folder options as well, integration. Uh, I think Google will do, do a similar thing. I'm not sure what the Microsoft account gets us or the Facebook account for that matter. We're going to go ahead and skip. Now you want to give us the full name, so our username, no, that's fine, STL is our username. We have an enterprise login, this is if you have an enterprise login to the system, you can use that. Otherwise, if I remember correctly, I think that this is more like an online type versus this is like a local account. Go ahead and hit next, hit your password, I'm going to hit the super secret password that is definitely not 123. And uh, it tells me this is too weak. Try more letters, numbers, punctuation, whatever else. I don't care if it's too weak. I actually want to use it. So now we start using Fedora and we are set to go. So give it just a moment here and it's going to give us now our desktop. So this is our first run screen. It tells us how to launch applications how to switch tasks, and how to use the Windows workspaces. So uh, basically here, this is our uh, basic workspace, just hitting your meta keys there. Um, you can also do just a variety of, of hotkeys to um, move things up and down on desktop spaces. It is awesome to learn if you... Uh, GNOME is a very different desktop. It is worth learning how it works, so just be aware of that. But it is a little bit different than, uh, than you might be used to. So here, uh, we'll have a quick look at our settings options over here. So this is, of course, running GNOME 3.34. So if we jump on over here, Fedora 31, you can see all the processor information, 3.34.1. And this kind of gives us uh, just some new features, new functions, uh, like changing backgrounds is a little bit different. It will give us a little bit faster, better responses. And if I remember correctly, I think the default of this is Wayland. So yeah, this is what it has installed out of the box. Really not a lot. Boxes, the calendars, contacts. Again, if I were to hook up my um, Nextcloud or Google, my contacts and my calendar would already be synced. I would not have to take any extra steps. Those are already set to go. Uh, we have a web browser, the basic LibreOffice suite. So just the basic four applications, the spreadsheets, uh, presentations, writers, and 
the drawing utilities. We have a maps. I've never actually had the maps work well with me. Um, weather, and then we have our utilities section, which just has a variety of different utilities. Let's go ahead and have a quick look at our system monitor. Uh, GNOME has a reputation of running on a lot of memory, and this guy is running on 1.14 gigabytes of memory. So you will not be putting this on your little 2 gigabyte uh, system. Um, but it should still run pretty responsibly. Installing new software, we have the Software Center. Let's go ahead and hit the Let's Go Shopping. And then uh, it's going to uh, first run, it's going to ask us this. Do you want to enable third-party repositories? If you want to be playing music or movies or things like this, you are going to want to enable this. This is the thing that used to take a long time to do. Now it happens very quickly. Uh, it will tell us that we have some updates available. It's checking and checking and checking and checking. While it's checking, I'm going to go ahead and have a brief look at the map utility because I've always had problems with it. I want to see if it's functioning well for us. All right. Okay. I do not like the fact that it does not have minimize and maximize buttons on default. Um, there's ways to add those on there, so I'll show you how to do that. So here's OS updates, uh, boxes. So it's just basic updates here. Um, if I click on these, I should be able to see what it wants to update. Uh, we are not going to run the updates right now uh, just because we're you know, looking at the system. Now, to get these the minimize and maximize buttons that you might want, and I know a lot of people do like those, uh, what I want to do is we're going to do a search, and we're going to need to install GNOME Tweaks. So installing GNOME Tweaks into the system. I'm going to go ahead and get that installed, and then that will give us an interface to add your minimize, maximize buttons and things like that. So I'll go ahead and launch GNOME Tweaks, and over here, here's your appearance, here's your extensions, keyboard and mouse, and top bar, this is the bar up here, Windows, Okay, middle click. I gotta remember where it is. There it goes. Maximize and minimize. So now we have maximize and minimize buttons. We can put them on the left, put them on the right, whichever you'd like to do. So now we have the ability to do those. Now, of course, how do you get them? You just gotta find them over here. Um, so that's kind of where they are. Here's our maps. Let's see if our maps works out well. Dude, it knows where I am. It's creepy. It's stalking me in State College, man. Well, Maps is working nicer now. That's good. All right. So uh, let's say that you did not add those. Uh, you did not add those repositories. You can do those by coming into this hamburger menu over here, hitting your software repositories, and then if you wanted to install Google Chrome, you can do it here. Um, uh, RPM Fusion for NVIDIA, RPM Fusion for Steam. So these are if you want to install NVIDIA drivers or Steam, you want to click on these to enable them. So we have a variety of different things installed. So GNOME Shell Extensions is already enabled. Linux Vendor is enabled. So looks like we are pretty good from here. All right. So uh, this is what GNOME 3.34 uh, looks like here on, um, on Fedora. What we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and log out. Um, not everybody likes to use Wayland, so if you want to see how to log in without Wayland, you should have that option. So clicking on your name, and you have this little gear next to your sign-up. So GNOME is Wayland. There's GNOME Classic and GNOME on X.org. So this is using X. So if you want to log in with that, you can go ahead and do this. I have generally found, at least on a virtual machine, I get a lot faster and better response when I'm using um, GNOME in this, uh, in this manner. In fact, let's go ahead and have a quick look at our utilities again and see if that impacted our disk usage or our RAM usage. So that's made it run a little bit faster, but it does seem to run. Uh, I've always found, at least on a virtual machine, it does run a little bit snappier. All right, so uh, there is Fedora. Again, nothing super special in the new Fedora. Uh, pretty much all we are getting with this is the upgrade of several different packages. But if you have not checked out Fedora lately, go ahead and check it out. Um, it has actually come a long way. 
And uh, it is now probably something that will end up on my recommendation list in the near future because it is just becoming so easy to install, so easy to work with, and I have had zero other issues with it. In fact, last year was the last time I ran it on production for a while. It gave me no problems at all other than it was a little bit, I was running Plasma, I was running Fedora Plasma. It was a little, little goofy and in installing software, Discovery didn't like to work, but we got around that pretty easy. So if you're using this basic GNOME one, absolutely, it works well. Again, they do have these nice tools to download if you're on Windows or on a Mac to put it on a device to uh, run it on your system. So definitely check out Fedora 31. It is worth it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.